Hello everyone and welcome to Rye Art Studio. Um, so I've decided to do these painting tutorials because uh, as some of you know I do a pub painting class which is in Yates and I've had to postpone a lot of them. So I've decided to bring the art classes to you. Now these are going to be absolutely free and I'm going to be uploading them hopefully quite regularly and you'll just have to get your paint and join in. So let's start. Now I need you to be really loose with this, really just smash that paint onto that canvas, that's what I do. Don't mess about, so let's just get a nice line there. Like I said, just be loose with it. The looser you are with your painting, the more effective it is, I find. If you've been to one of my pub painting workshops, that's why I always encourage just don't spend a lot of time on the details, just get that paint on and you always end up with something really cool and unique. I hope a lot of you haven't painted before that are doing these workshops because I just want to get really everyone involved. It doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, let's just do it. Okay, I'll pop the canvas a bit, it's quite a big one. So you might need a little bit of water in that paint, okay? Depends if it's water based or not, but most acrylics go on quite well. So we're going to go about halfway. It's going to take me probably a little longer than it is going to take you because I've got a pretty massive canvas here for this kind of painting. Feel free to pause the video, do what you need to do. And now we're going to put that red on, okay? So we'll put it on the top. Now just go for it, like that's the best way I always find. Just absolutely smash it off. And as you can see, I've just smashed them on there and it's just flown about, but it doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter because we're going to change it later. Right now, this is looking like five-year-olds done it. Don't worry. It's all about process. Now, if you ever have any white space like I'm having, but you feel like you don't want to waste too much paint, just dip your brush in the water a little bit. And just spread it about and that'll really make a good use of the paint instead of just using like and then as you can see I'm going over the yellow a little bit here too so we want to really blend that in okay now I'm going to take the yellow again What I'm going to do now is get the white, I'm not even washing my brush, it does not matter. Get the white, and just put a bit of white in there, let's see what colours, lovely colours we make with that. the yellow starting here and fading to the red. So we want to make that sun, the sunlight, make sure we're not going to do it just yet. 
but we're just going to do that in the middle. That white really makes a difference, it creates a really nice sunset effect. Now, can you see how the paint is kind of catching a little bit there? Just get the water and just blend it in again. So I'm just using white now. And you want to see these bits of white, you don't want to blend them all in. We don't want a perfect yellow to red ombre, we don't want that. We want the bits of white to stick out so that we can create this really nice sunset effect. And more white and continuing with that. Okay, now I'm getting a bit more yellow mixed with white. So I'm just mixing yellow and white together. I'm just going to bring it up a bit further just to break up that red because that red. You can just keep going until you're happy with it. You don't have to keep going at the same rate I'm going. I'm just going over it because it is quite a large canvas. But once you feel happy with that background, you can start on the other part. Feel free to pass forward with me. No worries. Right, I'm just going to get a bit more white because I like it but I feel it needs more of a transition in the bottom. Sometimes I don't even put it on my palette that I just smash it straight on. And then just go back into blending it in. Yeah, like I said before, in a lot of my workshops um, people always say to me wow you must be very patient with this I'm not and that's the reason I get it done fast because I just like to get that paint on the canvas as fast as I can because you end up just getting bored otherwise okay Depending on how much paint you put on, you might now have to wait for it to dry a bit. I put quite a lot, but I'm just going to put So, get your white again. I've run out of white, so I'm just going to put a bit more on my palette. Now we're going to do a nice sunset in the background, so the sun. So you can use a pretty big brush for this, get quite a lot of paint on your brush. I'm just going to go up like that and do a lovely step. As you can see, it's blending straight in to create a nice golden colour, but I do want it a bit more white than that. And I'm, I'm doing this from an angle, so sometimes it's hard for me to see properly, just so you guys can see everything that's going on here. And normally I paint straight on, but I want to make sure you guys can see Probably what I'm doing. So if it's kind of blended in there, I do like that to be fair. Just keep going down until you get the white you want. And with this part, it doesn't matter. We're going to go over with that black. With black. It 
doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing is with painting. So don't be getting out your, I don't know, you use compasses. Don't be getting them out. Just go for it. The more times you go around, the more silly you go. At my classes, I always recommend doing these kind of things first because we do pop painting, people order fish bowls, they order wine, beer, like if you do the circles at the end, you don't know what shape you're going to come out with. So let's get this done like that. Oh, we're still sober. So you can make it completely white, the sun. I am liking this kind of yellowy effect, to be honest. So I'm tempted. Just to make it like that. Make it a little bit more. When you've got another colour under white, it's a bit of a nightmare because White obviously turns into whatever colour you've got underneath, you see. It doesn't matter that you've got strokes. It doesn't have to be perfectly flat. I think it's nice with a bit of texture sometimes. Okay. Now I'm just going into that background, putting a bit more white in there. So you can see where the sun's coming out. So obviously it'd be more white around the sun. Now we're going to do the black bit on the bottom. So, I'm going to need some black on there. I'm just using Crawford and Black, that's the main. Um, it's really reasonably priced and it's pretty good as well. Pretty thick acrylic paint. I do like it. Again, we will need quite a big brush for this part because we're going to fill in all that bottom bit. Drink. Remember, always stay hydrated when you're painting. Very important. <coughs> okay, so get your black. So remember, this is silhouette painting. Um, one of my tips with painting is to not use black a lot when I'm doing a portrait or anything because black is a bit hard. I've always been told mix mix all the colours together, red, yellow and blue, and then you'll create a nice brown and then use that. But in this case, we're doing a silhouette painting, so it's nice to really go for it. So on the bottom, first of all, let's do a line so we know where we're kind of going up to. Okay. So we just need to fill in this space now. Do it in your own speed. We've all got a lot of time in our hands, let's just take our time and enjoy painting. I apologise for my shaky canvas, but it's such a big board. just going to do some lumps and bumps first. So what I'm going to do is just go up and down, 
let your hand do the work. Don't think about it. It doesn't have to be like, you want to go all over, okay? Really don't worry about it. Okay. Sorry, I do pull some strange faces when I'm putting these on. I try and keep my mouth closed. See, it is mixed in with the white bit, but I actually quite like that effect because it's a little bit of a reflection where in real life it would do that, it would catch the light of the sun. Got a lovely lump here. Might even do some big ones. You can do this painting with watercolour as well if that's what you're into. Uh, if you prefer it. I like acrylic because I mess up a lot so you can just go straight back over and do it again. You can, you can let it dry and then you can paint over it again. But you can also do it with oil, that's absolutely fine. I've worked in oil a few times but I like acrylic because it dries in like 10 minutes so that's really good. Now get your small brush. Some water on there. I'm going to make this black part look like Kind of a grassy area. And we're just going to do little flicks like this. I'll start at this side. So we're going to flip it up and do some nice grassy things. So with paintings like this, I do tend, most things I do, I do tend to have a photo and kind of use it as a reference, but with this I thought, I'll have a look at some ideas and then kind of incorporate them all together. Um, I saw a lot of elephant paintings that didn't have to be sun in the background, but just that's moving a bit, I think it's good. Let's have you in there. And then as you can see, most of the little tufts of grass I've done are quite big. So you can put some little ones in there just to make I'm just, because my paint's so wet and thick, I'm just, um, just bringing it down a little bit here. So lovely reflections here. Press down here. I mean, the grass isn't the biggest feature, so don't get too bogged down about it, you know, just Get it on there because we're going to do the elephants in a bit, which is what everyone's going to look at. Now we've pretty much finished the grass, we're going to go on to the tree. So a painting normally has a tree in it just because it kind of frames uh, whatever the subject is. So let's do a tree. Get plenty of black paint brush. Now, tree 
The tree isn't going to look like mine. Mine's not going to look like anyone else's. Um, just because I just want you to do what you want. Just make it your own unique tree. Let your hand guide you. It doesn't need to be perfect. So for the root, I'm going to start over on the left of the painting. I'm going to frame it around the sun with the tree, okay? So for the root. I'm going to have a little bit, so we've gone over the grass a little bit. I love that grass because that's the root there. Now I'm just going to, first of all, do my outline of the tree just so I know kind of where I'm going with it. Okay. Remember, I want to frame that sun. I don't even have anything in my head right now, it's just coming out. So let's just fill that in a little bit down here. So these trees need to be quite thin. The plains of Africa. So a type of tree, kind of not a very straight tree, might be the kind of thing you've seen in Lion King. So let's take it up there. And now the tree's going to have some branches sticking out a little bit. So stick out those branches. And that, just flip them out. Nothing's perfect. Just, as I said before, just bag the paint off the canvas and see what And at the bottom, we want to make sure we do a little bit of grass just so it's not quite straight. The roots, because we would have some grass growing there as well. And then from this base, we want to stick out some more branches. So just flick it wherever you want. So now, I'm just going to leave this for now. Oof, that was a lot of paint. Hmm. You just let your hand kind of go up, down, wherever it wants. It's quite therapeutic when you don't have a basis on what to actually do. So your tree could be slightly more to the right, left, whatever you want. Because we're going to go over it now with the leaves and everything. These aren't going to be your normal leaves, so if you have a fan brush for this bit, then it would be quite useful. Unfortunately, I cannot locate one, but just use any brush you can. Mine's quite a little one, but it's one I always tend to really smash onto my um, palette, so it's kind of frayed a little bit, which would be perfect for this part. So what we want to do, we'll start at the right, is we want to create lots little leaves. I'm going to go over it and over it so it doesn't need to be perfect the first time. We're going to really layer that off. Okay. Now you don't want too much water on your brush for this bit, just a lot. Just paint and then kind of dab it off a little bit. We want it to dry out.
and I'm being quite light with it here, I'm not really pushing it on, just so the tips of um, the bristles just catch the tip. I'm covering up quite a lot of what we've done, as you can see, so you didn't even have to worry about the branches. Also, work into it a little bit because we don't want it to be loaded up because obviously this brush is going to look the same everywhere. So we want to kind of work into it a bit in some places just so blow it out a little bit just so it doesn't look good. Now you can also use this method, just little circles, and then you can go over it with the um, tapping that brush on it, just to make it a little bit faster for yourself. As you know, I'm very impatient, so I'm going to find whatever method works for me. Right now, I'm not even having to touch my um, my palette because there's still wet paint on there, so I'm just using that right now. You don't want to go overboard, so don't cover the whole thing. Now I'm just going to go back over it and just work in a little bit of detail there. I like to add a bit of texture on the branches so the paint sticks off a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to do the elephants. So I am using my phone as a reference, so if I'm looking down a little bit, that's why. Unfortunately, I'm not the most amazing person that I can think of elephants in my head. I mean, I know they have ears and a trunk, but other than that, I don't really know. So I'm going to have a look at a little silhouette just to use it as a reference for this part. But you can watch my video and kind of follow in that way. Okay. So we're going to start with the mother elephant. And we're going to put her around here. I want them both walking through the sun uh, just to create that really nice silhouette effect. So we're going to draw her head first. I always start with the head because then you can base the body on the head. Otherwise, you draw an elephant's body and then you end up putting up with a little pea head. And um, we don't want a pea head, do we? So let's do the head first. So we're going to start with like kind of a triangle. Okay. Let's start around here. So this is going to be more or less where the head is. A little bit weird now. But then we're just going to follow down a little bit and up. And then I'm going to draw two circles here and here. It's kind of how you talk to draw animals sometimes in these step-by-step -step books. But it does help me, you know, with the joints and everything of an animal when you do one freehand and not with a grid. Okay, so now I'm going to go 
up here. And then we're gonna do the ear. So let's bring it up. Mine's not going really solid black, just because my son's still wet, unfortunately. I put so much white on it, uh, but don't worry about that. Okay, this bit's a little bit curved. Show the trunk's a little bit thicker from the top. And then when you follow this bit round, flick it out a little bit just to create them tusks. Now, once I've done this, I will go probably over it later when it's dry just to make the black really thick really does look like a silhouette. Now we're going to follow the circle down for the legs. So legs are never complete straight, do not do that. Make sure you give a little bit of curve there and then join that in on the grass there. The front leg. Okay, and then this bit. I'm going to start around the circle, swing it in, and I'm going to flick out the second leg there. So you can see all the four legs wouldn't be on the ground if they were walking forward, and just fill in that space. I'm starting to look like an elephant, I think. A little bit. And then we're going to do one leg going forward a little bit like that. Said legs don't have to be completely straight. This one's looking a bit straight for me. The bottom of elephants, you get quite rounded, so make sure you've got that rounded. As you can see, the paint is really thick and catching the white from behind. So um, just make sure that you go over it after and make sure it's completely thick black silhouette. Flick it out a little bit because that tail is going to be very useful. And the little one is going to be holding on to it. So the tail is really going to flick out here. And then we're going to put a little bit of I've made it very difficult for myself by not waiting for this paint to dry because, as you can see, it's just not staying on there very well. But well, hopefully, you can wait a little bit of time for that white pot to dry. We're going to go for the head first. Remember the year. 
Okay, so we've got one lump for the head. And another lump for the ear. Let's get it on. I'm just tweaking it a little bit, make sure it's the kind of thing I want. Enjoy the legs on completely. Let's get it on. Completely straight. And now. So get your brush nice and clean. Get some yellow paint, a bit of red, mix it up and make a nice orangey colour. And now you're going to sign the bottom bit because I don't know, you might be a famous artist one day, who knows? Just put lots of water on there. My paints have dried up a little bit from it here. And we just want to sign over here. You can sign your full name or you can sign just your initials, that's absolutely up to you. It's quite hard to sign with the brush. I'm just going to do my initials there and then later on I'll make sure that it's completely black and the elephant, make sure it really stands out. And um, so it's just completely flat and black like a silhouette. Oh, I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. That is the first one I've done with a camera. I do prefer teaching in person. Um, I find it a lot more interactive and entertaining. But I hope you did enjoy it anyway. I'm just doing my best to try to help people um, during this time where they might feel quite lonely, isolated and just a bit of companionship, a bit of fun. Just have a go at something you wouldn't normally do if you're isolated at home at the minute. Um, I do do pub painting workshops and when this is all over, I'll be doing them as normal again at Yates in Doncaster and other cities as well. Um, so just try and get involved, like my page and make sure you look out for the other ones. I'll be doing lots more over the next weeks just to get you all creative and keep you all inspired. Thank you very much and I hope you come and watch the next one. Bye.